family, Randy. Your grandparents came here from Austria. You see, we share the same history. Maria Altman was a very close family friend. She and her husband, Fritz, were two of my grandmother's closest friends. I even knew the painting of her aunt. I had seen it in Vienna, and my, my mom had pointed it out and said, you know, your grandmother's friend, Maria, that's her aunt, Adela Blochbauer. So I knew the painting, but I didn't know the story. Here she is, my aunt, Adela, painted by Gustav Klimt. It's quite a painting. She was taken off the walls of our home by the Nazis. And since then, she's been hanging in the Belvedere Gallery in Vienna. And now you'd like to be reunited. Wouldn't that be lovely? The Maria Altman story, the story of the woman in gold, is about an eight-year battle that Maria and I undertook to recover five paintings by Gustav Klimt that had been owned by her uncle and aunt in Vienna. It was really an unbelievable journey that I took with Maria Altman. I really worked with her very hard on this case, but also had these wonderful moments where she would tell me stories about my mother growing up or about my grandmother or even my great-grandmother. Like being with a family member and hearing old stories about your family all the time. I just loved it. I have to do what I can to keep these memories alive. Because people forget, you see. Especially the young. The scene where I'm at the Holocaust Memorial in Vienna was based on something that really did happen. But I was thinking of my great-grandfather who was murdered in Treblinka. The camp where my great-grandparents were murdered. Treblinka. It just made me very, very emotional. And I, I really, I broke down and started crying in a, actually in a crowd of people. In the film, they have parts where I'm giving up or Maria's giving up. In truth, neither of us were the type to ever give up. And this is a moment in history. A moment in which the past is asking something of the present. Many years ago, just outside these walls, terrible things happened. People dehumanized other people, persecuted them, sent many of them to their deaths. Eight years it took but eight years of fighting and we actually won in the end. And it, it, so many people have come up to me and said, you know, it's, it's a heroic thing that you did. And I never thought of it that way. I just thought of it as helping out my grandmother's best friend, Maria Altman, that we could use the fame of the painting and this, this amazing case to really reawaken interest in the Holocaust and educate people. That was, that was our principal motivation. I, I think there's a lot of work to be done. I think there's still a lot of people who would rather not know about the Holocaust. This museum, which is now over 50 years old, has always been free to the public. And that's something that we have fought so hard to keep. We're here to be a resource for the entire community. I have this vision that one of the students coming through our museum, 20 years down, 30 years down, that person's going to be our mayor. They're going to be our governor, they could even be our president. And it's that person who will be able to say to the doubters, no, I saw it. I saw this story with my own eyes, with my own ears. I heard a survivor speak. I saw the witnesses. I saw the evidence. I saw the shoes from Auschwitz. You can't say this didn't happen. Now we're closing in on 50,000 visitors a year coming through this museum who are getting that, that moment of understanding, of realization, of introduction to the greatest catastrophe in the history of mankind. Uh, it seems like an exaggeration to say it, but it, it's true. It's the worst human calamity in the history of, of our species. And uh, that we've had, that I've had an opportunity to help with so many people build this incredible institution to teach people about it. It's just the greatest gift of my life.